so excited to have you on here. Um, I know you're an expert in crypto, an expert in blockchain. You invest in blockchain technologies around the world. You have an amazing network of people that you work with and and dig into blockchain with. So I want to start with what is the difference between money and currency? Well, uh, Anna, money and currency have a lot of similar attributes. There's no one particular definition that is right or wrong uh, when it comes to the differentiation between money and currency. Now, uh, it's a medium of exchange. Money is a medium of exchange, as is currencies, as are currencies. Um, a unit, it also, it's also a unit of account, which is, um, uh, has, has many attributes like it's portable, durable, and fungible. And by fungible, what I mean is it's interchangeable. So if I have a dollar and uh, I can purchase something, um, I give it to you. You have a dollar to give me. It's the same unit of account, if you will. So mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's the difference between, well, that's what uh, currency and um, money is. And the one difference between money and currency is that um, currency I mean, currency, you can print as much as you want. You can, there's, un, it's unlimited pretty much. And it's it all depends. In this country. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. And money, the difference is that money can also, it has a, uh, it's a store of value for a long period of time, hence gold and silver, mm -hmm. uh, where it will always retain its value from thousands of years ago. What it, what it is today, that's the same number quantity other than the ones that are being mined. And it's got a um, finite uh, amount, right? So Right, like like for, like for example, gold and silver, there's a finite number of gold in the world. There's a, you, and the only way that you can actually make more gold is if you have an astronomical event. You have like an asteroid hit the earth and you have enough heat to, to create gold. So there's supernova. a supernova. Right, yep. supernova, right. Right. Okay, so then what are the different, tra so there's different traits with different forms of money. So there's different money and there's different traits with each form of money. Yes, um, uh, so money ha has um, uh, some characteristics. Like I mentioned before, they're, um, um, it's durable, it's uh, portable, and mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it, it, it retains its store of value uh, for a long period of time. Again, that's uh, gold and silver has been known since the biblical days uh way back when right so uh what was the first form of uh currency or money that was used to for trade um and going way back that's that's one of its main characteristics because what uh the the unit of met account from it can be the same here in the u.s and it can be same in china in india and mm -hmm. in any other country it's the same value so it, it retains its uh, um, uh, money, uh, the value, store of value. Got you. Okay. So it has the same value. So there, there's something that many people talk about now. And I know some people on my channel have even emailed me and asked me, what are your thoughts on crypto? What are your thoughts on blockchain? Blockchain is a really interesting term. I digged into it last year. But why don't you tell us what blockchain technology is? Because people do believe it's the future, and, and I can see why they say so. Yeah, um, blockchain technology is the tech underlying technology in which cryptocurrencies are built on, and it's nothing more in, in its purest form. It's a, a decentralized distributed ledger system, right? So, and what does that mean? It's it's a, <laughs> it's a, so every single record of transactions let's say there's any kind of transaction that happens between um two individuals right whatever mm -hmm. so that transaction is always um um documented on the blockchain itself mm -hmm. and it's it's in the and it can't once it's created it cannot be changed it cannot uh, it's immutable and um once um and it's uh, pretty much transparent everybody can see that transaction, but nobody can see who has made those transactions. That's why it is completely, that's a, that's the decentralized component of it. So uh, with transparency mm -hmm. and uh, security of the highest levels. 
Wow. That's essentially what blockchain technology is. Yeah, so it shows you that it's legit, that it is a that there there's a source, there's a beginning to it, but it doesn't show you who's actually transacting it, which is an amazing way, like you're saying, to to protect us from the centralized banks and all the control that they have. That's another cool thing about blockchain is that it's completely decentralized. Although, why don't you explain that there are some coins out there and there are some tokens out there. And actually, I'd love for you to describe the difference between coins and tokens. There are some that are centralized and some that are decentralized. How do we Correct. know the difference? And tell us what are coins and tokens. So uh, a, a crypto, like a Bitcoin. yeah, Bitcoin, for example, is the first blockchain that we know of, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that technology has a governing, that blockchain has a governing coin, which is known as Bitcoin, BTC, right? So every blockchain has a governing current governance currency which is um um if you're, it's a blockchain it is known as referred to as a coin and if you're building on that blockchain and you have a um a project that is let's say a decentralized project that has some kind of use case and you build it on let's say bitcoin's blockchain or ethereum's blockchain um that that project that has governance uh, currency will be referred to as a token. So Bitcoin is a blockchain. It's got a coin governing it. Okay. So Ethereum, you, go ahead. Ethereum is a blockchain and mm -hmm. it has Ether, ETH, ETH is governing that and it's a coin. Now, anything that's build, built on these blockchains will be uh, referred to as tokens. Okay, and so when people say that Bitcoin isn't backed by anything, is that true? Well, um, just... technically, it is. It's not That's backed not by um, any physical, uh, fungible um, okay. object or you know, gold. Let's say, for example, it's referred to as. But it's got a lot more of the features of money than currency, right? So Bitcoin is got it's completely, um, let's say for example, it's highly fungible, it's highly consumable, non-consumable, and it's highly portable, durable, divisible, secure, everything that uh, money attributes are right. So um, one can argue that it is a lot more. Uh, it's more backed by um, um, just the technology itself. And um, um, yeah, so that it's longevity, it can possibly have a store of value uh, for years and years to come. So speaking of Bitcoin, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? I know my thoughts on it, but what are your thoughts on Bitcoin? Well, uh, Bitcoin, the blockchain itself, the BTC coin and my unbiased BT, uh, thoughts, uh, I think that it's it'll last for some time. Um, but uh, in the future, there's going to be so many more uh, technological advances that happen in the uh, blockchain world or the cryptocurrency space in terms of real use case viable um, currencies being created right down the line. So right now, there's a lot of trust in the, in the Bitcoin blockchain because it was the first of its kind and a lot of money is actually parked in there as a store of value. Now, down the line, as we can see, the current luster of what Bitcoin is, it's significantly expensive to purchase one Bitcoin, right? So right. down the line, you're not going to see a lot of these new adopters that are going to be flooding into this asset class going to spend $25,000 or $20,000, whatever it is today, uh, to get just one currency, Right, right, digital currency. So a lot of these other projects are going to come in who have better technology, right? And a lot more um, similarly finite amount that is created uh, or minted, right? And those currencies will have a um, will get a bigger of the newer investors that are going to be introduced into this space. So when you say technology behind a coin or a token. Are you talking about the technology of, let's say, the transactions per minute, let's say, with a bank? Like what, 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 are, what do you mean when you say technologies with the coin? So um, there's the underlying, the underlying technology are um, 
the like you said transactions per second like right now we use remittance systems that are uh, that is known as swift right swift systems and it's extremely slow right it takes a couple a couple of minutes now or a couple of hours or it used to be where it takes a couple of weeks right to to settle the the payments but with blockchain and decentralization and different layers of technology now there's layer 1 solution layer 0 solutions layer 1 and now layer 2 transaction speeds are as fast as credit card swiping essentially you can get close to 100,000 transactions per second where bitcoin and ethereum bitcoin's like four transactions per second 4 to 10 or something like that and then uh, Ethereum right now on proof of work is about 15 transactions per second, where other trend, um, uh, more de decentralized and layer two solutions can go upwards of 60, 70,000 uh, transactions per second. Is, is that, for example, like XRP and XLM? XRP, XLM, all the ISO 222 tokens or coins, I should say, they're all uh, very fast in, in, in uh, remittance. So that's why they're ISO 220 standard, uh, ISO standards, yeah. So let's talk about XRP because it's something that I've actually also invested in recently. It's the only crypto that I actually invested in. Um, but, and you can be honest and obviously we want to know the truth about it because I've heard so many good things about it. I've done research about it. What What is XRP and what are its benefits and what do you see? Is it a good coin or is it a token? I think it's a... It's, it's a, a coin. Token. It's a coin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. XRP has got one of the, um, the, the underlying technology there is a distributed ledger system, right? Uh, distributed ledger technology. So uh, again, everything is um, um, visible and its main function is that it's cost effective. And it doesn't require a lot of XRP to get one transaction from point A to point B fulfilled, right? So less, less cost to transact and it's super fast. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason uh, why um, RippleNet, which is XRP's um, um, pro um, you know, uh, project, um, the XRP is the coin and uh, Ripple is the company that uh, came up with the um the project initially ripple labs do you believe the cryptocurrency is the future there are people that are using it now but is it the future where we're all going to go eventually cashless what are your thoughts on that so i don't i believe there's going to be some form of uh uh coexistence between cash and uh digital assets um and i think that uh that down the line there's got to be a new monetary system that's going to be, I mean, historically speaking, you know, between what has happened from when U.S. had uh, the dollar was backed by gold, right? And then in 19, I don't know, I don't even remember, was it 1941, uh, uh, it went from um, back, mm -hmm. backed by gold, it's no, 1971, we exited it completely with uh, Nixon kind of was forced to exit it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because of all the back uh, because U.S. Uh, kind of became the world cur reserve currency and all of the uh, world currencies were backed by the U.S. dollar, which was backed by 35 ounces, 35 cents, uh, 35 dollars per ounce of gold. Right. Mm -hmm. So nice. only the only currency that was backed by uh, gold was the U.S. dollar at the time. And then. Um, so I'm not getting too further down the line and with that, with the history, but what I was trying to say is that currencies always change. It's kind of like 30, 40 years of, uh, um, something will happen to change the next or, or, uh, reform the monetary system. So I think blockchain is the next, um, monetary reform that's coming. Yeah. And there's many people excited about it. I remember when I used to play poker back in the day and all my friends were, buzzing about bitcoin i think it was like three dollars at the at that time and they wow. were buzzing around and they jumped in they bought a bunch were explaining it and i was like no i'm like it's a little too complicated for me i'm okay and boom it jumped up and boom it jumped up another year and it was it was inc it's incredible but what do you um and obviously right now we're seeing bitcoin go down but which 
to wrap this up, what crypto, if someone was interested to jump in, and by the way, it's a hefty process. It's not that easy. Stanley had to walk me through buying XRP, XLM. Uh, you guys know that I don't, I don't have any Bitcoin. The Lord told me not to buy Bitcoin, so I didn't. Um, but what currencies do you, what cryptocurrencies do you recommend? Well, I, I, I can only tell you what I've done and I'm not going to let your audience know. I'm not a financial advisor, but yes. uh, what I've done is I've studied this market enough to know that when you're dealing with something uh, in the currency space or the money space, you need to, ad what, something that is addressing the financial world is what's uh, possibly going to be sustainable and maybe valuable, more valuable than others as well in the future. So with that in mm -hmm. mind, I did purchase a, a lot. I mean, I'm not a lot, but uh, enough of XRP and uh, the, the, the Ripple uh, project is, is going to revolutionize the way uh, cross-border payments are being carried out right now. Yeah. And um, similarly, that's a that's a business to business, institution to institution type of a, a project for Ripple and XRP. Let, let me actually jump in and ask you this real quick about XRP. It's going through something with, the, I think, the FCC, right? So they're going through a lawsuit. S yeah. And Sorry, people are uh, hesitant to to get into it. So what 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 would you say to those people that do some research? So right now, what they're trying to do is uh, with XRP being so uh, inexpensive right now, there are, there were a lot of people that were just flocking into the project and buying out XRP. Now, the government obviously doesn't like the fact that uh, it's not it's not beneficial to them to have a lot of millionaires or trans with transfer of wealth to everybody. Mm -hmm by holding on to these XRPs, right? So people who understand that will get into XRP right now and um, they will hold it for uh, until all these people that were investors that have paper hands and were afraid based off of what the narrative was and all this lawsuit that the SEC or Jay Clayton put onto the uh, project prior to exiting his position of power. And then uh, he launched this project, which destroyed the token's value. At, at one point, it was $1.92 or something back in um, uh, April of uh, 2021. And now it's down to like, it went down to as low as 18 or 17 cents in the last couple of months, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, kind of uh, um, uh, kind of like stabilized at like 35 cents right now. So it's still a huge um, uh inexpensive uh, project to get yourself involved in and then eventually becomes it will become a uh, a behemoth of a project or currency if you will any other currency that you recommend besides xrp well yes um uh the xrp was uh, more of an institutional you know banking business to business kind of a, a token that uh, supply i mean that's going to solve that issue and more stellar, I think, is also a peer-to-peer -peer kind of a tra retail transactional uh, project, which is Stellar Lumens. And the uh, ticker for that uh, project is XLM, which is the same founder, um, co-founders, uh, kind of like split up. Um, Jeb McCaleb is the uh, founder of Stellar Lumens, and he was also part of the co-founding team of XRP and Ripple. So... Um, XLM is like the little sister of, uh, uh, of XRP uh, or a little brother, whichever one politically correct. I'm not. <laughs> so and then you have another um, um, token called uh, I mean, coin called uh, XDC, which is the Zenfin project. Um, so that's also a um, uh, similarly addressing the um, financial uh, industry. And uh, transactional, you know, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transactions um, and monetary transactions, you know. So, and then you have Algorand, which is Algo A L G O, um, and those are these these four are ISO two hundred twenty-two um, uh, standard projects. So, um, those are pretty much 
in the banking space, you're going to, uh, these are the ones that I would start with, um, that I did start with. Let me just say it's not financial advice, but it's ones that I started with, right? So mm -hmm. um, these are the ones that I'm going to hold for long term, like five, 10 years down the line, and maybe sell slowly as the price of these tokens go, I mean, coins go up. Well, there you guys have it. Something that uh, this serial entrepreneur and blockchain analyst invested in himself totally up to you if you want to do it too. He's not a financial advisor. Here you have it. Now, if people have any questions, you guys can actually message him and, and send him a message through his website, seriousinvestor.club slash Stanley dash offer. Go check him out there. You guys can, you know, send him a, a question, a comment. You can have him, even his alerts, his updates. He puts a lot of great content out there. And again, just really cool tech to look into. So check him out there. Stanley, Philip, thank you again for coming on with us, educating us. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me and I appreciate it. Thank you. But I want to say a quick shout out to Noble Gold Investments. If you're looking what to do with your money, I highly recommend gold and silver as well as investing into blockchain technologies. So really thankful for them. Thank you, Noble Gold. They're, they're really amazing. Great customer service. And they'll walk you through the process of getting your own gold and silver. So thank you, Noble Gold, for sending me my silver and my gold. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com.